Okay, I think guys, we are ready to go. We are still one minute ahead, but we have our next speaker here ready waiting for us. So I'll start introducing him. His name is Mario Garcia, and he's an active open source user and contributor for over a decade. So he's a speaker at tech and innovation events since 2008 and attended events in Latin America and in Europe. He's an active Mozilla uh, contributor and Mozilla reps, and he joined GitLab Heroes in 2019. So let's uh, uh, welcome our next speaker. Mario, welcome. Hello. Hi, Olga. Thanks for the introduction. You're very welcome. Welcome here. Where are you based now? I'm in the southwest of Mexico. Oh, wow, it's amazing. Is it nice and warm weather now? Yeah. How is, uh, it? is it nice? Is it summer? Or I suppose. Yeah, well, my city is always hot, so. Very um, good. Uh, yeah, we are in cold winter. It's cold. I'm I'm based on the west coast of Ireland, so it's never cold and dark most of the time, and it's rainy. So you imagine I'm very jealous, and you know, to have weather like you have. Okay, are you ready to get started? Yeah. Brilliant. Okay. Good luck with that. Enjoy, guys. So hello everyone. I'm I'm so excited to be here and sharing with the Python community again. What I'm talking about uh, today is uh, how we can use uh, GitLab CI as our continuous integration tool for Python project. I will tell you uh, uh, a little bit about it and share um, some cases scenarios where you can use GitLab CI for, for your projects. And some things that we have to consider uh, before uh, preparing our project for uh, deploying using this tool. So uh, I'm a GitLab hero. Um, I've been um, a Mozilla contributor for almost a decade. And you can find me on, on Twitter as MarioGMD. Uh, before talking about how we can configure uh, a, a GitLab repository for deploying uh, a Python a project, uh, we have to know that when configuring uh, Heroku, or, uh, I'm talking about this platform, but but you can uh, use GitLab CI with other uh, cloud platforms like um, Amazon Web Services, Google Cloud, and and, and other uh, tools that uh, the GitLab CI supports. But um, we need to know that Heroku has a official build pack for for Python. And it requires that, that we have uh, the dependencies file uh, in the repository. Um, it has support for, um, for pipm. So you can have a pip file, or, or you uh, must create a requirements.txt file. And for the startup configuration, uh, we must create a proc file so Heroku knows how to run our application. And we have to specify um, the version of Python that we are using for, for the project. So Heroku knows how to, how to install it. And there is also uh, a build pack that has support for, for poetry. But some, something uh, we need to know about the Python support that Heroku offers is that it doesn't support um, share libraries. Uh, there are some um, cases and areas where we need to have Python with share libraries enabled, but Heroku doesn't support that. So in that case, we have to uh, containerize our, our application uh, using Docker, for example. And talking about Docker, there's an official Docker image uh, hosted on Docker Hub for Python and some other technologies um, based on Python like Django. But you can also uh, create a, a custom Docker image. I have a custom Docker image that, that I created last year when I was working on a, on a demo for um, a web application built with Rust and Python. I will talk a little bit about it, but later. 
And talking uh, about GitLab CI, uh, there are some things that we have to know about it. And some of the, the features that uh, the, the tool provides that, are, uh, that you can find interesting. So if you have a, a GitLab account on gitlab.com, uh, you will have access to the um, to GitLab CI, that is the CI/CD tool uh, that GitLab uh, provides with with the platform. It is open source. It has uh, good documentation. The, the official documentation has enough enough examples how about how we can uh, use this tool. But um, there are there are also content available in the official blog of, of GitLab and some of um, of the members of the program that, that I'm part of, uh, we, we are writing some um, blog posts um, talking about some specific case scenarios where, where we can uh, use GitLab CI. Uh, When, and these are um, some of the most relevant features of, of, of this tool. But um, I would like to, to focus on the, 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 on the support for Docker. Um, you can configure uh, GitLab CI for building a, a custom Docker image and publish that image on on Docker Hub, but it also offer um, GitLab offers the, its own container registry, so you you don't have to publish your your image on Docker Hub. You can uh, publish uh, an image that you will be using for um, the GitLab CI part or any other um, part of the project that you require to, to use a custom Docker image for. And well, now, now talking about how we can uh, configure uh, GitLab CI for working with um, a Python uh, app, uh, I will be talking about Flask. Uh, I have a, a repository where you can find um, a basic example and some basic configuration. And I'm deploying this application to, to Heroku using GitLab CI. And there are some things that we have to do before we can um, have our application on, on a production environment. So uh, after we create um, a GitLab repository and we uh, sync that repository with the code of our application, we have to create some, some additional files for, for Heroku uh, knows how to um, properly deploy the, that application. We have to create a prop file. Uh, that prop file uh, will contain um, this instruction, this uh, line that is the, the instruction necessary for Heroku to know how to run uh, the application. Uh, we know that uh, if you are familiar with Flask, you have uh, you have a, ser a server, but it is it is uh, ready for production. So we have to use another um, solution like G G Unicorn. So we have to add uh, G Unicorn um, also as as a dependency for for our project. So Heroku have uh, access to to this command. And we have to create the runtime.txt file to specify the version of Python that we are using for, for the project. We have, uh, if we are um, using pipn or poetry, we don't have to create this file as Heroku knows uh, when, when reads. Um, the pip file and the pyproject.toml file that what is the version of Python that the project is using. And talking about the dependencies, um, depending on the way 
that we are configuring our project, we have to create one of these these files. If we create, uh, or if we are using uh, Poetry or pipm, we only need these two this file or or this, depending on on the tool that we that we choose, and we can we can um, omit this this file as it isn't necessary. Uh, Heroku will know what version of Python is being used by reading uh, one of these files. And don't forget to to add a git ignore file. Uh, this is a website that, that I recommend for creating the, the git ignore for um, the technologies that you are using for, for your project. Um, it has support for Python. Uh, we, we can uh, create a git ignore for Python projects or for ROS or for both technologies. And for example, if we are using um, poetry, we will require the, the build pack uh, that has support for, for poetry. The official build pack provided by Heroku doesn't have support for, for poetry, but uh, has support for, for pipm. So um, if we uh, don't want to use um, this uh, configuration file for, for the dependencies of our project, we can ex export um, the content of this file to a requirements.txt file. And uh, something that we um, must know is that if we are using the requirements.txt file, Heroku, um, when reads this file, we have to specify the version of Python that we are using as it doesn't have support for wildcards when we are uh, using our, the requirements.txt file. Then um, we go to Heroku, we have to create a new app at the Python build pack. We have to choose one, one of the two that, that, are, that are listed here. This is the official one. This is the one that has support for poetry. And then we, we go to, the, to our account and copy the API key. So we, we will be used, uh, we will be using this, uh, this key for the configuration of GitLab CI. This value is necessary for GitLab CI as it is the way to that GitLab has access to your Heroku account. Uh, we, we can we can provide um, uh, username and password uh, the the way that that. GitLab CI uses for accessing our Heroku account is by using the API key that um, that is created when when we uh, register on the platform. So uh, on a repository, I, I will show you uh, this in in a few minutes. But uh, in the configuration of the repository, we go to the to settings CI/CD and uh, we, in the variable sections, we uh, click on on expand, and um, we have to add uh, this as the name of the variable, and the value will be the API key that we copied before. Then we have to create the GitLab CI YAML file that is the um, configuration file for um, GitLab CI. So here in this file, we have to um, configure the, the jobs that will be running when the pipeline is started. I just have um, a stage here that is the production stage, but we can run tests here um, and for Deploying our application to Heroku, we will be using um, the Docker image of, of Ruby, the version 2.7. And 
the the important part here on the the command that will that GitLab CI will be running is that we have to specify the name of the application and the name of the variable that we created before. So uh, after uh, we we do this, um, the pipeline will start uh, running, and if there is no no error, um, your application will or we will publish an um, an error. But let me show you um, a repository um, that I created recently. That there is a basic example of how we use uh, GitLab CI for deploying our Python application. Let me share another screen. Just a second. So I have this um, this repository on my GitLab account uh, at the end of the of the slides. It is the the URL for for this um, repository, so so you can check. The this is a basic project. Um, the important part here is uh, well, I I didn't delete uh, this file as I I don't need it here as I'm using uh, the requirements.txt file for um, telling. Um, Heroku, what are the the dependencies for for the project that that I will be deploying to to that platform? But the important files here are the runtime.txt file that has the version of Python uh, I'm using for this project. That is the 3.8.6. And the profile where we have to specify the the uh, instruction uh, for Heroku. So for starting the, the application while, once is, it is uh, deployed on, on the platform. And if we go here uh, in settings, CICD, in the variable sections, I have this um, variable that that is uh, that contains the the API key that I uh, copied for from my my account. Um, if we go to Heroku, I have a I have the app here, and if if I go to um, the configuration of my account, the API key is here, so I have to copy this key that that is the one that I have to uh, assign to a variable in 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 the GitLab repository. And let me go back to the configuration. I, I'm using the official uh, build pack provided by Heroku, the, the one that has support for Python and for uh, PM talking about uh, the, the way that we manage the dependencies of our project. And the content of the GitLab CI uh, YAML file is um, this one. This is the, the the configuration that I did for uh, deploying this application. I'm, I'm not running any tests at this moment. That uh, this is a basic example just to show you how uh, we uh, use GitLab CI for deploying um, any Python application. 
there are other additional configurations that we have to do uh, depending on the other technologies that we are using for building our project. But this is the uh, basic configuration for a basic uh, example uh, of a web app built with Flask. And um, let me show you the pipelines. We can see the in, in real time uh, what GitLab CI is, is uh, what instructions GitLab CI is running. And we can see here if there is any error uh, on the configuration uh, of the project or the configuration files that we have to create. We can see that here. Um, well, um, it detects that I'm using poetry. And we'll, um, we'll start um, building the, the applications uh, and then uh, it will uh, deploy the, the code uh, to, to uh, the Heroku app that I created uh, before. And this is a basic um, example, um, but why I uh, why did I talk about uh, Docker? Uh, there is uh, another um, case scenario that I, I want to talk about. Imagine that you are building an app, not using only Python, but using uh, Python with other technology. Uh, I'm also a Rust developer, and um, last year I, I prepared uh, a demo for for uh, another conference. And um, the idea uh, when I started uh, working on, on this demo is to know how I can use uh, both uh, ROS and Python for building application. And uh, something that I, I have to face is, is that there is not enough documentation. Um, the documentation available for the, the the framework that, that I used for building a web application with Ross, but running um, part of the backend with, with Python. Um, there is not enough documentation on how to configure GitLab or um, the idea that uh, if you are using both technologies, you require um, that Python is built with shared libraries and uh, Heroku doesn't support that. So the, the best solution for that was uh, building, a, was uh, containerized uh, the application. And you, if you go to uh, my GitLab account, you will see uh, this um, repository uh, that, that the name is Rust Python demo. You can check here. Um, this project is also deployed to Heroku, but this time I have to create a, a Docker image. That Docker image is the one that I will be that I will publish uh, that I will use for publishing my app on Heroku. And uh, this is a, a Rust app that, that is using Python for for some backend um, task. And um, I'm using uh, Poetry for uh, managing the, the dependencies of, uh, of the project. And this is the configuration file. We have to first uh, build a custom Docker image by, uh, using the Docker file that is uh, on the repository and uh, then publish that, that app on, on Heroku. I have this application here. Uh, let me show you what uh, this one. So this is the application that I that I hosted here, and I'm using GitLab CI for um, publishing, um, for deploying the app on Heroku. 
but I have to containerize that as for the, the, the characteristics of the project. Um, and as um, Rust needed um, to have um, access to the shared libraries of Python, we have to change a little bit uh, the configuration and I have the application running here. Uh, it will um, take some minutes to, to load, but uh, what basically what it's doing is a web app will build with Rust, but that web app has access to a Firebase database and the access to Firebase is uh, done by using a uh, Python model, and this this is what you will see if you go to to the to the URL, URL that uh, Heroku creates for for the app. And this is documented. Uh, um, what I mentioned before about how we can use um, GitLab CI for um, for deploying a, a basic app uh, on Heroku, a basic Python app on Heroku. It, it isn't documented yet. I, I will be working on a, on a, on a blog post that I uh, I will publish later. But let me. Well, so this is what I. Uh, wanted to share with you. If you have any questions, you can uh, find me on Twitter. Uh, there are also some uh, blog posts that I already published on, on Debt. You can uh, go to my Debt account, or and you can find the the first uh, repository by going to to this uh, GitLab repository. Thank you so much. It's a great presentation, and um, let's see if we have any questions. Um, yes, there was a question there, but it's already answered, actually, but I still read it for you. Whether GitLab Community Edition includes the CI, CD functionality? We have an answer from uh, other you know, viewers, but uh, maybe you could um, talk about it a little bit more. Well, um, GitLab CI it has been available for, well, I, I don't know. Um, for how many years, but I, I started using uh, GitLab uh, uh, two years ago and GitLab CI was already there. And the support for Python and, and Rust and other technologies, uh, um, GitLab CI has support for, for, for those technologies. Um, some specific uh, things related to the, the projects that, I, that I've been working on uh, are not documented and something that I've been doing is writing um, what I uh, writing some uh, blog posts uh, about GitLab CI and how I've been using um, the tool for this kind of project. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, we don't have any other questions for now, but uh, if there are any questions, I hope people can ask on Discord or reach you on Twitter. Thanks so much again and uh, have a great day and it was great to have you here. Thank you. Have a great Thank day. You. Too. Bye. Okay, guys, we are, before we move to our next talk, I'm going to play some uh, sponsor videos. So I hope you, you know, some of you just join now. So otherwise, uh, just one more time.